you buy like a new receiver for ten bucks, like uh, two months from now, and it's going to be upgraded. You oh know, yeah. You buy a new flight controller, but it's going to be listed as the exact same thing. So it's a lot different than something like this. You know, this is the follow me quad that we're about to test out here in a second if we can with my second generation home built gimbal here and the fpv on something like this sucks you know this, <laughs> this is fpv from last year you know and i mean the the frame rate's gonna be like 20 frames 18 frames a second Ooh. you know but it's got a built-in uh, digital video recorder and like i was saying the uh, so what's your goal with the gimbal that's the only camera this drone has, huh? Yeah, it does come, you can buy one with a dual axis gimbal that has, you know, two of these servers right, on right, it. Right, right, right. You're going to get the same. I mean, let me show you the... I will let it chase me around. Where's my battery? It's a big, long, that's our battery right there. And you can use your uh, standard charger with this because it's got, you know, just oh, a yeah, normal yeah. balance yeah. plug. Yeah. And it's got, I think that's a Dean's connector on there. So it looks like a smart battery, but it's really just, you know, a, a dumb battery. Yeah. Gotcha. And this thing's like $120 or something. You know, it's a low end, low cost brushless quad rotor. So if you want a follow me system and all the nice built in features, you know, at a low price, but here's our gimbal's action. I guess I should plug in the gimbal if I actually want it to work. Plug in the camera, rather. You can see there's a little bit of noise there. See my homemade gimbal there is, you know, half-assed and... Oh! See it. Anytime that, see all that little jitter you got right there? Yeah. You're gonna get that anytime you're using a brushed servo as your gimbal motor. Uh. One or two, it doesn't matter. So when this thing's recording, it's just gonna be recording, you know, that jitter at that shape. But uh, I had to rebuild all these connectors. All the connector wires for this camera were the wrong size. But I mean, it powers up and it will start recording. If I turn on my transmitter here. FPV racing, but there's always a new racer to test. And I came back and I was like, where are you? My wife's going, and she's all like, honey, he's already back. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try out the follow me feature. And I think where he launches from has an effect on the follow me feature. Okay. So I'm going to want him to be facing me. Okay. So if I click this button three times, he's going to launch himself up in the air. When we, was, when we was coming out, I heard was the engine. <laughs> is she crazy? <laughs> it is. Okay, there you go. Is he on? Yeah. Okay, there. He has locked him to me. It's a follow me feature, so let's bring him down a little lower. And let's see how well he can follow me. So I'm going to bring him a little closer. I don't want him to hit the tree here, but we are going this way. See, he doesn't see the tree, so I will raise him up. But ready? Yeah. Go. Ha <laughs> 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 right, that's cool. Pretty winding experience, but that's a pretty good follow me experience. I'm 
not doing any of that flying right there. So how far is it going to stay away at all times? I'm able to set the distance right now, so if I want him to be a little further back, right. I can pull him further back. The one thing he does not like to do is change the spin. He will always lock back on that same heading. Gotcha. So I can change his altitude, and I can change his position, and he'll stay relative to the transmitter in that position. Gotcha. But if you've got a camera on there, and you want him to stay centered in on you, you want it to kind of lock in right in front of you. Right. So that you can keep that the whole time. Right. <laughs> We're gonna get about 15 or 20 minutes worth of flight, so I mean, he's gonna keep on flying. The only feature I haven't been able to get to work is the spin in a circle feature. Right. So let's try normal mode and just use the normal flight. He has a brushed quad rotor, so... He can get it. He can. I mean, he's really dialed in. The altimeter works really nice. The altimeter's great. The uh, altitude hold is great. The GPS works great. I mean, for, you know, less than 200 bucks, it's a really nice all-in-one, follow-me, flying, fun aircraft. And here, try it out. And you can, it is, try bringing them closer to you. Like you've got to control him to get closer to you. Cause he's going to follow you. So he'll, so you can chase after him and you won't be able to catch him. But remember the spin's not going to, it won't let you change the spin, just the pitch and the roll and the altitude. You can't use the spin and let go of it and send it back? Um, in follow me mode, if, it, if you change the spin, it'll go back to whatever direction it was facing. After you let it go? Yeah. You can spin right, but let go, it'll come and back. And it comes back, yeah, yeah, but you can change it. Well, I would, you wouldn't want it to change that. You'd want it to be able Stay to spin and in, come back. Yeah. Yeah. You got your gimbal set on there, so you really just, you know, change the... It does have controls on the transmitter that let you spin your gimbal left and right, so you can spin the camera. Mm -hmm. It's got an FSI-6 uh, transmitter in there, and it does beep. I don't know if it's which beep it is, if it's the low battery voltage or what, but it should still have another couple of minutes. Try not to get my hoop to get in the way. <laughs> That's crazy. Come let Fred give it a try. All right, Fred's gonna try it out. Is it in follow me mode right now? Yeah. I okay. Didn't, I didn't take it out. So, would we be able to somehow put that remote on like a race drone and have it chase another drone? That's that's the idea. Is you can. Uh, you know have it chasing a fucking drone. Yeah, if you set whatever's up in that transmitter. That's cheap, wouldn't it? You could put a smartwatch in the on your uh, drone on your racing drone, and yeah, have your camera drone just follow it. Or another racing drone follow it, which I really do want to try. I just have not gotten two systems yet that I can put together to do that with. Man, that drone is so Terminator-ish, man. <laughs> it really is, man. Put some facial recognition on there, a nice little, you know, gun on it, and there you go. The end of the world has come. Easy to fly, huh? It's smooth. Everything just GPS-assisted and altitude's automatic. And doing that altimeter at a low cost is not easy. I've seen a lot of people do a really bad job at 
altitude hold, and they've really got it to within about two or three feet. Hey, the battery on that thing's beeping. Is that what it is? I don't know if it's the transmitter, but because the lights don't, the lights are not flashing on the aircraft, but they should if the battery's running low. I'm gonna go plug this last battery in and zip yeah, it out real quick before I got like half a battery left. We are totally about to lose the. We're losing the light, man. I know. I just wanted to get in the air one time and look at those lights, cause I've never flown and looked at lights at night. And if you want to take it out of follow me mode and get just normal flight, yeah. uh, we'll switch it into normal flight mode. It's going to take off the uh, altitude hold and the GPS, but nice, it's, nice. It's back in normal mode. It's now back, it's in back to normal mode. It's back in GPS mode nice. now. But flip that switch all the way up, and you'll be you know no GPS, no altimeter. You can do some FPV racing with it. But not just like you're not going to compete with it, but you can definitely have some real fun with it, especially since it's so dialed in. Yeah. Nice, I like the high handle. It's just it's you can, smooth as fuck. You can see the benefits of line of sight flight too. I mean, FPV flight's a lot of fun, but man. Yeah. If you get your line of sight down, there's a lot of stuff you can do with exactly. something like this. Exactly, that's why, exactly. Now we got two. Thing is tight too. I like it. And these are about the same price as a racer, you know? Really? Oh yeah. This whole thing without the gimbal, it's like, I think 120, something like that. I mean, look how easy just let me set it down, just move, just period. Press Is that because it's not a racer it's like that? Yeah, it's because it's dialed in to be as smooth as possible, so you're not gonna get those hard banking turns. Yeah, no, I know, I'm like, where's my banking? Now he is, I think he's landing. If you press this button in the middle three times, he'll land himself. Really? And if you press it three times again, he'll take off. Because he will force land himself if the battery gets to that he, point. He, I didn't have no control on him. But I mean, man, we got like at least 15, 20 minutes worth of use out of him. Yeah, we would have been a swap two batteries by then. Oh yeah, this racer that he's got going here is going to be dead here at the next, you know, three, four minutes. But he's definitely getting a much different experience mm -hmm. flying through them gates at uh, 50, 60 miles an hour there. Well, he is up there. He goes. He got under that gate, and he's down. <laughs> <laughs> and how do I hit this off? Uh, top switch over to the right. Uh, Turns it off? Top middle switch between the two pieces of tape. It's a, that's actually a switch right oh, there, okay. too. That's not and that, switch. that'll flip it off. But yeah, I mean, you can feel it's not an expensive transmitter. It's like, you know. There's some good stuff right here. It's an FSI-6, and I mean, they really, they worked hard to make a good low-cost aircraft. This thing is, I think it's definitely worth the money. You know, you put yeah, a nice camera on there, and you can, you know, film yourself and, you know, do some GPS and repro. I've not been able to communicate with the USB port. I don't know what the hell they programmed it with, but definitely worth checking out. Did you uh, nice. make it through that gate there? Yeah, I've been having an issue where, uh, where video transmission is just dying out out of nowhere. Yeah. You did it again? So, I don't know, like I'll just be flying and video will go wash out. It's happened with two different video transmitters, so uh, I don't know what to do now, but Knowing me, I'll probably just buy everything I'll do and start over again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this hobby's all about, though, man. You fly, you crash, and you upgrade, you know? You don't buy an all-in-one system, you know, unless you're doing something like, you know, GPS, follow me, and stuff like that. 
Yeah. You know, but man, I think. See the beeper? Oh yeah. I think that beeper was a good idea, man. <laughs> Definitely the best way to find your aircraft in tall grass. You know, I have to say I really like the CGO35. This is a, a little single axis gimbal that I rigged up from an MC02 Esheen all-in-one FPV camera and a servo and it's just basically on a mounting plate that's taped up there and I had to make some connectors there that would fit in the uh, connector slot there but did a pretty good job and the uh, GPS on this aircraft and the follow me feature did a really good job following me around while I was wearing my FPV uh, goggles here so I think this is actually a pretty capable brushless uh, ready to fly aircraft here it's got some decent gps features the uh i don't know about the gimbal that um it comes with uh, we didn't get the version with the gimbal so we had to make our own gimbal here so that's definitely a nice gps aircraft right there it's got a lot of capabilities it followed me around really good on the uh, follow me mode definitely a great aircraft came from banggood.com as always don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more